Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. This is an update on my original Absolera thesis. We're going to be looking into the progress that the company has made since I wrote my original deep dive in the last two quarters, Q1 and Q2 2024. Let's get deep into it. My view is that this company is lacking a digital twin of your proteome. Once it has that map, and I will elaborate on what I mean by that, this company can become a cash machine. But the company is not quite there yet. Absolera becomes investable for me the moment they start regularly increasing the number of molecules that they take to the clinic every quarter, such that they can grow revenue. This is not happening at the moment, with zero molecules making it to the clinic in Q1 2024, and just one making it to the clinic in Q2 2024. One is not exactly a low number. It's very hard to take a molecule to the clinic in Absolera's situation, and it's always great news. But I just don't see a cadence that's quite appealing yet. Having said that, this metric, the number of molecules taken to the clinic continues to trend in the right direction as you can see in the graph below since 2020 with cumulative molecules in the clinic coming in at a record 14 in Q2 2024 and that's the graph on the right. You can see how the trend is appealing it's been going up exponentially to call it something since 2020 and so something is definitely going right inside the company. So I wouldn't say that just because they didn't take a molecule to the clinic in Q1 and they took quote unquote just one in Q2 2024 that this company is worth disregarding. I actually think that these guys are doing something right. And while indeed this company is not yet investable for me, I see Absolera qualitatively making good progress per the advancement that I will explain now. A year ago, I had dinner with a CAR T therapy expert and he explained how the side effects were intolerable for most of the patients. Even though the CAR T part of the equation, so reprogramming T cells to kill cancer cells, was actually working. These side effects stem in part from cytokine storm whereby the T cells in question release too many cytokines, thus ultimately damaging patient tissue via excessive inflammation. At the time, this doctor was enthused with CAR T therapies, but he couldn't see a way around the problem relating to cytokine storms. In Q1 2024, I was fascinated to see Absolera announce that they had created reproducibly, so time and time again, TCEs with low cytokine release, thus outperforming CAR T when it comes to killing cancerous cells in vitro, so in a dish, in a petri dish, not in an actual body of an animal or of a human. By the way, by TCE, I refer to T cell engagers, which I explained in my original Absolera deep dive. But essentially, what TCEs do is they enable Absolera to point T cells at a specific molecule. So the engagers basically bind up with the T cells and with the target that we want the T cells to kill. And that's how we direct the T cells at them. And then the T cells do their thing. But here is where it gets a bit more interesting. In the Q2 2024 call, CEO Carl Hansen explained that initially they thought they were going to solve this problem by identifying CD3 binders that would latch onto the CD3 binder site in the T cells, thus downregulating T cell activity and reducing the cytokines that are released. So basically they thought the CD3 binders would be a way to calm down the T cells and get the job done, kill the cancerous tumor, but without releasing so many cytokines. Indeed, they found three families of CD3 binders within their existing library of molecules that get the job done, that enable TCEs to kill tumors effectively and that simultaneously enable the low release of cytokines, thus circumventing the problem of cytokine storms, at least in vitro. So this is not yet in animals and or in humans. So obviously that's very interesting because cancer is a big problem. CAR T therapy is effective in that it does kill tumors, but then it sometimes also kills patients. And so I found it interesting qualitatively that Absolera has found, in theory, a way to circumvent the main issue with CAR T therapies. And I think it just speaks to the power of this platform. Of course, there's a wide gap between in vitro so doing something in a Petri dish and then doing it in vivo in an actual living organism. And that's the gap broadly between me admiring this company and investing in it. But the tech that these guys are building is quite appealing. I like it. I think it's worth tracking. Now, regardless of how this particular advancement performs in vivo, I continue to be very interested in Absolera because of my view of the future of healthcare. I believe that the future of healthcare consists in you having a personalized digital twin of your proteome. I've explained a number of times how your body is essentially made of building blocks. It's like Legos. These are essentially proteins that interact with each other, driven by electromagnetic forces. So a protein with a shape will naturally latch onto another protein with 
with an inverse shape. So it's like Lego blocks. And so the shape of a protein or a peptide, you know, smaller components of proteins and stuff is what ultimately determines the function of a molecule in question inside the body. And so my view is that healthcare is going to evolve into the following. You have a digital twin of your proteome, the whole map of all of these Lego blocks interacting and doing things inside your body. And this map tells you when something is going wrong. And then the molecules that you put into your human body are the buttons that you push to fix the things that are going wrong. So if you have a perfect map of your body, a digital twin that real time is telling you what's going on, and then you have a factory that enables you to produce these buttons real time, cheaply, conveniently, and so forth, then you can fix human illness across the board. Abcelera is evolving into the quote unquote button factory. And if you think about it at a high level, what Abcelera is currently lacking is a digital twin of your proteome. If they knew exactly what's happening inside your body coming up next, they would know exactly what buttons to produce to fix you. And they can do this because of their platform, which by the way, I explore in depth in the original deep dive. So check that out. It's available on the blog, YouTube, Spotify, etc., everywhere. So at present, Abcelera is actually looking for issues to fix with its button factory. It's looking for a problem to fix with its solution and not the other way around. This is uh, fairly non-elegantly depicted by the graph that you see on the screen now. I believe that whoever has a digital twin of your proteome, so understands exactly what's happening in your body at any point in time, and they have the quote-unquote button factory, that's a cash machine. That's the end of human illness as we know it. At least the more mechanic aspects of human illness. Maybe there's other planes in which we do have illness and we don't know about, but I'm just speculating. So when it comes to the proteome, you can fix anything with this equation, that's a cash machine. That's what I think Abcelera should be trending to evolve into. And um, they're definitely doing the button factory right, but they're missing the digital twin component. They don't have that. And so this definitely brings to mind the main lesson that I've learned from my mistakes, which I link to in the written form of this write-up. So you can go and review them and take away the lessons that I took away without having to get stuff wrong. The main lesson is that investing in a company that does not solve a growing volume of acute customer pains in in a way that's increasingly harder to imitate while producing more and more cash tends to end in pain. Yet, the fact that Abcelera found an in vitro solution to cytokine storms for CAR-T therapies within their existing library suggests that they are building a digital twin of sorts, only just not a personalized one yet. Over time, and especially as the company leans into developing its own drugs and so dealing with patients directly, this tentative digital twin that they are developing may evolve into a fully personalized one over time. But at the moment, of course, this is just I'm hypothesizing what other aspect of its operations this company is missing and what actually it needs to evolve into a cash machine. A personalized digital twin of your proteome becoming a reality or not is a direct function of how AI and compute evolves over the coming decades. Indeed, a real-time map of your proteome is not enough to satisfy the above equation that I was showing on the screen now. You also need to run real-time simulations so you know exactly what buttons will do what in order to not only terminate the illness in question, but also minimize side effects and potentially even eliminate them completely. The human body has approximately 37 trillion cells, which means that the total volume of data generated by the body daily could be millions of terabytes per day. So we will need much more powerful smartphones than at present for this to happen. Regardless, Abcelera does not have to develop a personalized digital twin of your proteome in order to succeed, at least enough for investors to to see some sort of return. I was pleased to see Abcelera announce in the Q2 2024 earnings call that both ABCL 635 and ABCL 575 will be submitted to clinical trial applications in Q2 2025, as the company had announced just before I wrote my original deep dive. How these two molecules perform in clinical trials, whether they do get admitted or not, will enable great insight into how powerful the company's platform is or not. Remember that Abcelera had allegedly built a platform that could, in theory, synthesize any antibody, any molecule, any peptide by layering acquired technology on top of its antibody platform. I explain this in depth in the deep dive and I think you should go and review it because the tech is absolutely fascinating. Thus, since I wrote my deep dive, the major signal Abcelera has emitted since is that their platform 
has been capable of circumventing in vitro the major issue with CAR T therapies, which in my view is the most promising way of dealing with cancer, at least the way that's generally accepted by the establishment. I also find it interesting to see Absolera pointing their platform to potentially solve atopic dermatitis by targeting the OX40 ligand. The OX40 ligand, known as OX40L shorthand, binds to the OX40 receptor on T cells, which then enhances the proliferation and survival of memory T cells. And so what this does is it keeps your skin inflamed via the release of inflammatory cytokines and other mechanisms. But basically, atopic dermatitis is therefore chronic inflammation of the skin. And by neutralizing the OX40 ligand, so by synthesizing a molecule with a shape that has the inverse shape of the OX40 ligand and which binds with it, Absolera can theoretically solve this condition by interrupting the chain of causality that ultimately leads to the excessive release of cytokines and that keeps the skin inflamed. For a review on how ligands work, I suggest you read my original Absolera deep dive, of course, where you will find a deep dive on the science behind the company's platform. But essentially, as depicted in the graph below, a ligand of a specific shape which is the red circle that you see on the right hand side of the graph will simply bind to a receptor of a specific shape, an inverse one, in the cell membrane. So this ligand will be floating around and it will simply bind on with a receptor that's sitting at the edge of your cell. And once these two engage, this sets off downstream changes in the cell and enhanced memory T cell activation is simply one of the many changes that can be triggered. So ligands control metabolic processes and this is part of Absolera's platform. They, via acquisitions and via the proprietary technology, they figured out a way to produce basically any ligand and thus potentially alter any process within the cell. My view on Absolera, to finish off, remains that the company's platform has the potential to cure any human ailment that we know of, but it is still not sending molecules to the clinic at a rate that would be conducive to revenue growth. While the platform continues to flex its muscles and showcase its optionality via the aforementioned circumvention of cytokine storms and via the potential application in taking out the OX40 ligand and potentially solving atopic dermatitis, I believe this company needs a far more accurate and computable map of the human proteome in order to be truly, truly useful. This doesn't mean that it won't grow without the map, but if they were to create this map, I know for sure that I'd be investing in this company because the combination is really, really powerful. And I believe that they will figure this out along the way. I think that this is managed by a quite a talented team. I like the CEO. I think the guy is very much uh, on top of the game. But, uh, you know, I think I already invested in biotech in the past. I picked Amaris. I got that wrong. That was a total loss of capital. So I'm not in a rush. What I'm doing here is I'm enjoying learning about biotech. I know that the biggest opportunities in 10, 20 years down the line will come from this domain as the biggest opportunities now tend to come from digital technologies, platforms, networks, etc. And so what I'm doing here is educating myself. And I hope that you find this useful too. Now, ultimately, I believe that the world is trending in that direction with compute set to exponentiate going forward with AI and neural nets, in my opinion, opinion set to continue scaling relatively well over the coming decades. And so I will continue tracking this company going forward because I think their platform is fascinating. And again, as I said, I don't think they need a full map of the a human proteome to succeed, but I do need to see a faster cadence, a more regular one of uh, new molecules sent to the clinic in order to ultimately validate the power of this platform. From a theoretical standpoint, I like that this platform can do anything. But before I invest in this, because I only have five stocks and I like keeping concentrated positions in companies that I think have tremendous upside. I need to see more progress on that front. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this update. If you haven't, I really suggest that you review my original deep dive. You're going to learn a lot about the science and the worst it's going to do for you is prepare you for a world in which we have more and more opportunities over time in the biotech space. This is still a very treacherous space, but it's definitely one that I would recommend anyone to start educating him or herself in. Thank you for joining me. If you like this, as always, can I please ask you one favor? Please share this with one friend whom you think will enjoy it. These deep dives are for free and so the only way this grows is with your help. So thank you very much. Take care and until next time.